Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how to explain your Power BI past projects in an interview. And this is a crucial tactic in getting your next job. Because if you can explain yourself well, that's going to help relieve a lot of the stress from the person interviewing you. So this is a Tactical Thursday episode, so I've got Dr. Hall joining me. So I have a very simple framework and it's a little bit different because I'm pitching consulting clients and you're going to be pitching people who are trying to hire you, but it's kind of the same thing. I don't know. Would you agree on it's that? A, it's a transaction. So, right. Yeah. So exchange. actually I'd argue that it's a higher bar for me to get hired as a consultant because you know, I'm, I'm, the, I'm a line item and I can be removed really quickly to where if you're working full time as an analyst, they need you. You're part of their infrastructure. I'm just a one-off project for them. So here's my framework. When I'm talking or pitching it to a client, I have a, basically a breaks down to four steps. So I talk about the impact I had in a project, talk about the decision that I drove, then I reverse engineer that decision into the KPIs and the dimensions of the KPIs that are relevant. Now I realize that's probably a lot for you to just digest all at once. So I've actually thought through a very specific use case that can illustrate this point. So maybe we could role play here. So you could be the client okay. and I can be pitching you. Okay. So ask me about, you know, my past success. <laughs> uh, tell me about one of your more recent projects with one of your clients. Okay. Um, so I recently um, had a really good success case with a client who hired me to do sales analysis. Oh. So what we did was we drove their sales up by $50,000 because of an insight that we found studying their data. Okay. So the decision that we drove was, how are you gonna market? Hmm. And we kind of sat on that question and realized, all right, well we need to map what is success for a sales campaign. Sure. So we broke that down into total sales, mm -hmm. deal size, and number of deals. Okay. And then we got even more granular and said, all right, how can we find insights within these kind of high level KPIs? Okay. So then we broke down even further. So let's just root down on total sales. Okay. So we looked at total sales across geography, mm -hmm. by time, and then by demographic. So demographic meaning age and gender. Okay. What we found by studying all of their sales data is that women between the age of 35 and 44 in Georgia were by far their most richest pocket of sales. Okay. So now we told their sales team to focus on that demographic more. Sure. And that drove the sales up by $50,000 okay. comparing to last year. Yeah, you're getting more bang for the buck for, right. the, for that demographic. So I, if that's way over the top that we just did a role play here, let us know. But I think that you seeing it in action and how I pitch clients is probably really valuable. So what's your take on that? Critique me, please. Oh, I think that it's a great standpoint to um, lead with the win. Hmm. Well, so you start with the impact. A lot of people think of line linearly and they go through the story of like beginning, right. middle and end. But maybe by the time you get to the end, you've lost their attention. So I think it's always good to start with that win. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's one great um, feature of that. And then you talked about the decision, but maybe I would slow that down and phrase that decision in a form of a trade off because the company and your client knows their business. They know their problems. They don't necessarily mm -hmm. need to know what their decision is to be made, but you need to let them know that you understand their trade-offs. And so you form it in the form of like a trade-off. Like say like, you know, you've only got so much um, advertising budget around and you're trying to decide which demographic you want to focus it on. Right. Um, so, so you can spread it all evenly or you can try to focus on a demographic that's overperforming. Okay. I've actually had this thought and I, this is kind of cool for you guys watching because I'm getting real time like lessons are being learned here. Mm -hmm. I've thought about making a video series of the game of supply chain analytics or the game of sales. Mm -hmm. I really like kind of framing it up and like, well you called it trade off but I would kind of call it game theory. Okay. Like we all know that to grow your sales, you need to effectively target the right demographic. Okay. So that is the game that's being played. So the way you score in that game is you increase your total sales, mm -hmm. your deal size, and the number of people buying your product. Okay. So those are like ways to score. It's kind of you can think of it like a football game or something. Okay. Like that. So you're so you're talking about gamification. 
basically in a way that it it, it dumbs it down and well it it dumbs it I wouldn't say dumb down but it simplifies it in a way that is very palatable mm-hmm. and the person can understand yes mm-hmm. because I, you know I'm talking about another company with mm-hmm. another goal and another project yeah to someone that I'm pitching yeah so they may not understand the nuance sure can I can I give you like the economic perspective on sure. how you might talk about this project sure. uh, so when you think about the impact mm-hmm. um, you can just look at this whole thing from the perspective of cost-benefit analysis okay uh, because ultimately they want they want to hire you because the benefits of hiring you greatly outweighs the cost so right. you leave with the impact which is the net benefits benefits minus cost the decision is deciding what level of the program you want to do and then as you decide each level you're you're balancing these trade-offs mm-hmm. at these different levels then you got to decide well how are you going to measure those different program levels that's where the kpis come in Mm-hmm. And then there are complexities that might give you insights if you dig a little bit deeper, and that's where you're throwing in the dimensions there. And so, like the 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 critical thinking skills is where, you, is where it really is a chance to shine when it comes to those dimensions. I'm glad that you mentioned critical thinking because I think that that it's almost like a trust building exercise. Of mm-hmm. If you pay me, you're investing in someone that is not going to just look to you for guidance. Mm-hmm. They're going to proactively go out, find opportunity and bring them to you. So if you can be an employee who does that, that can be a huge way to impress your interviewer because I don't think very many people think critically. I mean, it's a big buzzword, especially among a lot of colleges and universities, but maybe it's just my own personal academic experience. I haven't, it's, it's really hard to be taught critical thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to measure, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which means you can say you're a great critical thinker, and, and it's very hard for people to prove otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's think critically about what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I, I love this like little kind of debate that we're having here. Sure. But it, it also gives you guys a really good opportunity to kind of, you know, I don't want to be redundant here, but think critically about how are you explaining your past success stories. Because you need to write a narrative that's going to sell you in your interview process. Make sure you guys subscribe and ring the bell for notifications because we post new content on analytics each and every week. I'll see you guys in the upcoming videos.